What do you make of this strong dollar? What impact is it having? What impact will it have? So I, I think Europe has to raise rates. There is no two ways about it. If, if, if they don't raise the rates, they have a problem. And do you think this well, is, sure, this is something that's going to happen? <laughs> I mean, in addition to, to the energy problem, they have a huge problem in, in, in the sense that, you know, the currency keeps depreciating. When does a strong dollar, though, become a problem for everything else, every other asset class and every other country also, Thomas? What do you see? Well, it, it, it is generally a problem for international trade. It's, it's, uh, it, it's so, so okay for the U.S. for the time being, but on the long run, it just, you know, wrecks havoc with international trade. It's, it's, it's not uh, going to be good on the long run. So uh, we have to keep rates sort of in tandem with each other. So to that point, Thomas, do you think that equities then in the U.S. specifically have bottomed? No, I, I've been I've been uh, bearish for quite some time now, and I do not think that equities have bottomed because I do not think that uh, inflation is is over. Uh, I think that there are some long-term inflationary trends that are going to continue, and even though. For the time being, inflation will come down a little bit, uh, not uh, maybe come down quite a bit in the United States, but that will be temporary because we have these deep um, issues of, of deglobalization, ESG, lack of uh, skilled labor, and continuing deficit spending and, and uh, increasing uh, debt service costs. So they, they all contribute to inflation, and yep. uh, it's not going to be over very soon. So uh, rates will have to rise even within the United States uh, somewhat longer, and, uh, that, uh, and we'll stay up there. So do you think the Fed is capable of getting inflation back down to 2% within the next few years, Thomas? No, it's, it, that's not going to happen. That's that. No, I mean, uh, they, they would have to cause a very, very serious depression to do that, and they will not do that. So, is that good news for stocks or bad news for stocks? You talk about the fact that the lows aren't in yet. How low do we go? And once we get down there, then what? So I think we'll, we'll, we'll bottom out between 33 and 3,500. Uh, the market will stay there for a while, and then we will learn how to run an inflationary economy. And, and, and then as replacement costs are increasing with, with increasing inflation, I think stocks will begin to rise from there. Uh, Thomas, what are hedge funds doing right now? I feel like person after person, a strategist after strategist, they're now sitting in cash. What are you noticing in terms of hedge fund flows? That, that's right. Hedge funds are sitting on a lot of cash. And uh, so they, they, our, our cash reserves have, our customers' cash reserves have risen in the, in the course of the last, uh, you know, several months uh, very substantially and they are at an all-time high right now. And um, I, I think they will selectively hmm. start coming into the market as it goes further down. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Do you get the impression that they're sitting in cash because cash is now yielding more or that they're sitting waiting to jump back into stocks? Well, you know, the, the yield right now is, is not so bad. I mean. Uh, you know, we, we, for example, pay half a percent under Fed fund rates, so we uh, soon enough we'll be we'll playing two and a half percent, and uh, that, I mean, that sure is still well under inflation rates, but it it is uh, better than uh, being in stocks at the moment. That is kind of very yep. risky, right? So, 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 Thomas, is that the right trade? 
Uh, is that where you would put money to work right now? I say work. Is that where you would put money right now? Would you be in cash? We have our cash and, and people who are sophisticated and understand how to how to uh, trade option spreads, for example, that you can generate a handsome return uh, on your money in, in option spreads and uh, vertical yep. spreads. And, uh, you know, just just wait for some of these stocks to, to come to a, a, a good point where they can be bought. In addition, People who would be uh, who would have the guts to invest nowadays in Europe, there there are terrific fines there right now. Hmm. Yeah, as you say, you've got to have guts though. Given what the what the backdrop looks like, maybe a, maybe a tough ask for a lot of American investors. Um, Thomas, QE quantitative easing created a lot of wealth. Does QT quantitative tightening? do the exact opposite well it it, it, it is uh, going it is going to be an issue because we'll be we'll be facing a situation that we have never faced before so uh, uh, it, it is sort of hard to hard to tell but what is going to happen as a result in the money markets but uh, we could have some some uh, uh, shaky uh, time so it's it's uh, we have to be very i mean the, the fed has to be very careful about how they do this i think just going 95 billion dollars a month is is if so you can't really put it on autopilot Thomas, before we let you go, um, I did want to talk to you about uh, carbon offsets and impact. Uh, you offer an app that allows ESG investors to trade. Today we got news of sort of what an anti-ESG investor going after Chevron. Um, what have you noticed in terms of interest in ESG? Because it does feel like the conversation in Europe is becoming energy security versus going green and not being able to have both. And I'm curious to see what investors are doing with that. So, you know, they, 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 <laughs> there are two minds uh, on this topic uh, around the world, and, and that includes our customers. You know, some customers fervently believe in, in, in having to grow green, and others believe that uh, that is, is not so urgent. So um, we are trying to cater to the people who, who, who want to to both sides, right? Because we, we, we just want to create whatever investment vehicles they want to use. And uh, uh, so uh, the ability to, to uh, buy carbon uh, on our platform is, is, is uh, you know, is sought after by, by many, many people. And uh, we're hoping that they'll be happy doing it on our platform. Yep. Thomas, final quick question from me. How's business? Sorry? How is business? Is it busy out oh, there busy. right now, just coming out well, of the summer? Yeah, for, for interactive brokers, this is, this is a very good time. It is a very good time because, you know, when the rates are rising, people become conscious of, of what they are um, paying, for example, on margin loans, and and they actually look and they realize that uh, we are charging less than half as much as other brokers do, and other people want to see what they are, what what they what we're paying them on idle cash, and when they see three and a half percent, I mean two and a half percent compared to a fraction of a percent at other brokers, then. Uh, you know, that helps them uh, uh, make the decision to come to us. So this is, this, is, this is a good time for interactive brokers, but generally it's a, it's a good time for the brokerage business in general because, uh, you know, rising rates are, are good for the business.